Today, this is Wednesday at 2.08 p.m., 2.09 p.m. Central Time here, and uh, we're back again, and I hope that uh, you had a good last couple days here, and I uh, hope you got to watch Monday's broadcast. If you haven't, uh, you should really try to, if at all possible. I think it'll be a blessing to you. I think it will help you to understand a few things that uh, the Lord would have you to understand. Okay? So we'll see what happens there with that if you're able to do that. But I think that it will bless, bless you. So you, you uh, uh, do, do that. It's either on Rumble or it is on Sermon Audio. And either way, you can catch it there. And and get some good information that you need to grow and to learn about uh, what's going on today in our world, especially between the Jews and the Jesuits, the Jesuit order, and uh, the power structure that's on in this world right now. The power structure here is one. Evident. Not it's probably not what you think it is. Probably not exactly what you think it is. So, anyway, let's see here. All right, but uh, looks like uh, we got about 50 people on here on Rumble so far. Looks like uh, Mary, Mary Teresa was first. Mary beat Carl. Uh, Jody Hammond was next, and... Got uh, Sue Seven, not Sue Eight, but Sue Seven. And uh, let's see, we've got Andrew Old Paz Media, and then we have Andrea and Carl, Pilgrim Lady. Becca's on there. Joey Mac is on there. Aaron and and then, uh, Rachel is on there. Okay, got a good uh, good group on the chat there uh, right now. But uh, anyway, oh, you weren't first. Mary was first. I saw it up there on my list. Mary was first. Carl's got the I did. Oh, I get in trouble with these. They, they those, uh, some of those people, they get a little upset. I don't have, I don't think I have his other albums. So anyway, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but maybe I do. I just don't know. All right. Well, today we are going to get into the scriptures here and we are going to be talking about Lucifer's preachers, transformed ministers, deceitful workers. They are the uh, they are the ministers of they are the transformed ministers of righteousness, but they are actually unrighteous, right? They are actually unrighteous workers, and they feign themselves. to be something that they are not. And the Apostle Paul is dealing with them. He's, he's dealing with them uh, and their false teaching. And we got, boy, I'll tell you, there's a lot of it today. But I'll, uh, these men are more deceptive than what you think. And um, uh, let's see. They are... Uh, they are more deceptive than what you think, and they are everywhere. So, the truth of the matter is, is that if you don't understand this, you'll get messed up. You 
you'll get very messed up. There, these men infiltrate churches. They feign themselves with authority. They feign themselves to be something that they are not. And they really do wreak havoc in the churches. They really do cause a lot of damage. I've, I've pastored men like this. And I've dealt with them. And uh, they are damaging people. Very damaging people. But they're they're very sneaky people. Very. They have the power. Here's what people don't realize. These people have the power to deceive. That's that's their power. Their power is to deceive people. And they deceive them with an element of the truth. Is what they do. And it's dangerous. When you've ever had someone like this in your ministry or in your church or around you, boy, I'll tell you what. You'll never be the same again. It will certainly impact you. And it'll change the way that you see things. They are Lucifer's preachers. They are transformed ministers. The Bible will give you the exact definition of them. I just use that for a title. But the Bible talks about them. Paul says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, these people promote a counterfeit Christ on different levels. So close to the real one. The jargon is the same. So close to the real one. That you can be deceived. By them. Paul said, for I suppose I was not a whip behind the very chiefest apostles. But he talks about another Jesus. Another spirit. Another gospel. Through subtlety. It is through subtlety that this happens. It is not blatant. It is not blatant that men are seduced from simplicity. It's men like, I'll give you examples. Men that pastor churches that are like that. Here's one of them, Greg Locke.
right? I think it's funny that Greg Locke is rebuking somebody for dealing with false prophets. Right? But he, but he is supporting Benny Hinn. Think about that. These are those deceitful workers. Greg Locke didn't start out like that. Right? Greg Locke started out at Ambassador Bible College. Right? You watch. They're all going to turn on each other. So how come Greg didn't know that guy was a fake? since he had all those people in his church. These people are antichrist. That's who they are. They're deceitful workers. Very deceptive. Many of them are aligned with the charismatic movement. Many of them come into Baptist churches and they literally make themselves like Baptist. How do they do it? How do they make themselves like, like Bible believers, strong Bible believers? How do they do that? They do it by the power of Satan. It is a legitimate power to deceive. Legitimate. So we talked about on 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 uh, last week, I think it was, it wasn't Monday because we covered Israel on Mon Monday. But last week, for such are false prophets. I'll take you to that sermon right there. Apostles of Antichrist discerning charismatic counterfeit. Okay. You can go back and listen to that one. All right? That'll help you to understand the first part of that. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. They are deceitful workers. All of what they do is deceptive. It is, mar by the way, many signs and lying wonders. The end times are marked of, with times of deceit and false Christs. Another Christ, another gospel, another spirit. Right? 
Matthew 24 warns of the same exact thing. He said, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. For there, verse number 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That's what they do. Now, how they do it is a whole nother story. But the Apostle Paul shows us. Now, remember, it is that. Remember, let me show you something here. I feel like Jim Carrey. Let me show you something. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, sorry. All right. It just sounded like that. It reminded me of that. Many years ago. <laughs> Okay. All right, here it is. This is the power that it's that it's done by. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. Now, what does that mean? Well, they don't deny Jesus came in the flesh. If they preach another Jesus, one that is not applicable to the scriptures, one that is not described in the scriptures, they are denying that Jesus came in the flesh because they're preaching another Christ. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Overcome who? The spirit of Antichrist and those that have it. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is he that is in the world? The Antichrist spirit. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. What is he talking about? He's talking about the spirit of Antichrist. That's what he's talking about. And this is what power they have. This is the power to transform. It is the power to transform themselves. By what power? By that spirit. Okay. 
They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Why do they hear Joel Olstein? Because he's of the world. And he has that Antichrist spirit. Why do they hear Kenneth Copeland? Because he's of the world. Why are so many people why do so many people like Greg Locke? Because he has the Antichrist spirit. And he's of the world. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. What is the spirit of truth? Christ. The gospel. The teachings of the scriptures. That's the difference. We have truth, absolute truth. They have error. Truth mixed with error. That's what makes it so powerful. It is counterfeit. See the difference? It's counter. It, that's the power they have. The Bible defines that power, a second witness to that power, and tells you where that spirit comes from, that spirit of error. It tells you exactly where that spirit comes from. Here it is. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Remember, that's that spirit of Antichrist. Well, what is it? It's counterfeit. Look, I'm a poor Baptist preacher. I don't have any money on me. Otherwise, I'd show you. But if I, I don't have any counterfeit money anyway, but if I had $2 bills, right, and one was counterfeit and one was real, the counterfeit has to look very similar to the real in order for it to pass that stink test. That spirit of Antichrist is so close. To the truth. That only. Those that have the spirit of God will eventually figure it out. I have had these deceitful workers. In our church, I, I, I've had them there. I've pastored them. I've literally had them next to me, had my ear next to me. It's like a serpent breathing on you. And they, they mock and they copycat everything about a ministry and that leader of that ministry and the gospel truth of that that ministry portrays, they get as close to it as they can with very, very, very subtle deviations. So subtle that you can hardly pick up on it at times. Some are more blatant than others, like, you know, the charismatics.
But some charismatics are so closet charismatic that you can't even tell what they're doing. They do that stuff in private. And you have no idea. That you've been seduced from simplicity. That you've been deceived. Yeah, they're trained, all right, by Satan. And his... Ministers of unrighteousness. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers. Those deceitful workers, one said it this way, they went by the name of laborers in Christ's vineyard when they were loiters in it. Instead of laborers, they were loiterers. They pretended to work but did not, and to work for Christ when they only served themselves in their own bellies. They took upon them to interpret the scriptures, but in a very fallacious manner. They walked in craftiness and handled the word of God deceitfully and lay in wait to deceive men, and were masters of so much art and cunning that if it was possible, they would have deceived the very elect. And may deceive for a time. That's what they do. They're very cunning, like Satan, very subtle, like Satan. Subtle. The B is silent. Subtle. Very subtle. When I've had them all, all said and done. I've had them look at me and say things like, Satan wants me to turn on you. He wants me to be Judas to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very smooth. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Not so much by putting on a like garb or dress, but by pretending to be of the same principles and to follow their practices and to pursue the same good ends in their ministrations. But they are deceitful workers. And here's the thing. You do not discover their wickedness at first view. You do not discover their wickedness right away. You do not even realize the manipulation and witchcraft. You don't realize it until it's too late. I want to ask you a question. Do you believe this text? a good question to ask you do you believe it B 
Because Paul sure did. Under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he wrote it and he believed it. And he was warning about it. He, he did it over and over again. He did it in the book of Acts. Acts 20, 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Paul's warning. See, Paul understood what they were capable of. He got it. He knew what they were capable of. They do not discover their wickedness at first view, says one, but artfully insinuate themselves under some fair pretext. Artfully. They practice, plot, and plan. They lay, the Bible says they lay up in bed at night. And they dream their scheme. That's what they do. They dream their scheme. Dream it up on their bed at night. I had a man tell me, he looked at me and he said, he told, and I, I thought it was because he, you know, wanted to find a good church and he wanted to do right and all that kind of thing. But looked at me and he said, you know, and I, I, that's what I assumed he meant by it. He looked at me and said, well, I watched you for over a year before I even contacted you. Really? Now, hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? <laughs> really is, but he said, "I watched. I watched you." And then he told others, "Well, I agree with Pastor Cooley on everything. I agree. I agree with him on everything." I don't even agree with Pastor Cooley on everything. I don't even agree with me on everything. But see, that's one of the tools to use. They, they transform themselves. I'm telling you, folks, I believe it because it's in this book. And I believe it secondarily because I watched it happen. I experienced it. And if it wasn't in the Bible, I wouldn't think it was even real. I'd be like, I must have made that up. Right? I would have thought that I made it up. But this is how. 
They artfully insinuate themselves under some fair pretext, hence they require to be carefully and thoroughly sifted, lest we should receive persons as servants of Christ as soon as any appearance of excellence is discovered. Nor does Paul in malice and envy put an unfavorable construction upon what might be looked upon as an excellence, but constrained by their dishonesty, he unfolds to view the evil that lay ahead lay hid because there was a dangerous profaneness of virtue in pretending to burn with greater zeal than all the servants of Christ. See, you watch it and you see it. And By the way, once this happens and if that person isn't flushed out before then, then when it happens, and when it's of Satan and when it happens, you won't even know what happened until it's too late. I, I liken it to Looney Tunes. When somebody took a big old sledgehammer and knocked it over Elmer Fudd's head and then their stars are going everywhere and there's a lump on their head. Well, imagine that in the mind without a real hammer. Because when you've had a run-in with Satan, your mind becomes completely disoriented. And you realize you've been deceived or attacked with deception, with malice. But just remember, I ain't preaching to you no fairy tale. I'm preaching to you what the Bible says right there and what I saw with my own two God-given eyeballs. <laughs> I know what God delivered me from. I watched it. They're transformed. They transform themselves. They have this power, this spirit of Antichrist, this power to, it's satanic deception, and it is so strong and so hairlined with the truth that it becomes believable. To a certain point, it becomes believable to a certain point. Where God reveals it. They are deceitful workers. He goes on to tell us and to warn us. And no marvel. No marvel. That word's an interesting word, isn't it? And no marvel. What does that word mean, marvel? Marvel at something. Jesus said, marvel not that you must be born again. To wonder that which arrests the attention. And causes a person to stand or gaze or to pause. To wonder with admiration. To wonder. He says, no marvel, don't stumble at it. Don't stop at it and think. Because that is exactly when, when Satan's ministers of righteousness were false, transforming themselves in the, into the ministers of righteousness, right? When they do that, it will cause you to marvel. Because you will not believe what happened. 
Now, we're going to talk about Satan, the angel of light, as an angel of light. We're going to talk about that probably on Friday. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. It is an argument from the greater to the less, says one. If Satan, who is the basis of all beings, nay, the head and chief of all wicked persons, transforms himself, what will his ministers do? His ministers are antichrist, and they only want to deceive. We have experienced, says one, of both every day. For when Satan tempts us to evil, he does not profess to be what he really is. For he would lose his object. If we were made aware of his being a mortal enemy and opposer of our salvation, hence he always makes use of some cloak for the purpose of ensnaring us and does not immediately show his horns as the common expression is, but rather makes it his endeavor to appear as an angel. Even when he tempts us to gross crimes, he makes use, nevertheless, of some pretext that he may draw us when we are off our guard into his nets. What then if he attacks us under the appearance of good, nay, under the very title of God himself? His lifeguards imitate, as I have said, the same artifice. There are golden preambles, the vicar of Christ, the successor of Peter, the servants of God's servants. But let the mask be pulled off, and who and what will the Pope be discovered to be? Scarcely will Satan himself, his master, surpass so accomplished a scholar in any kind of abomination. They come to deceive. Because Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, which is his deadliest, deadliest device. This right here is Satan's most a deadly appearance. And we hear people talk about this all the time. And I'm going to cover that on Friday, I think, about the angel of light. We're going to cover that then. Hence, we must be on our guard against his masks. We must be ready for them. Should anyone now ask, shall we then regard all with suspicion? I answer that the apostle did not by any means intend this, for there are marks of discrimination which were the part of stupidity, not of prudence, to overlook. He was simply desirous to arouse our attention that we may not straightway judge of the lion from the skin. For if we are not hasty in forming a judgment, the Lord will order it so that the ears of the animal will be discovered ere long. Farther, he was desirous in like manner to admonish us in forming an estimate of Christ's servants, not to regard masks, but to seek after what is of more importance, ministers of righteousness, faithful persons, They masked themselves. Masked as ministers of righteousness. For Satan himself, and no marvel we are told over and over again. You should remember this. Don't marvel, and no wonder it need not surprise you what the disciples do when you consider the character of their master. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. The apostle had the history of the temptation and the fall of man, particularly in view, says one. It is very likely that here he refers to the same thing. In whatever form Satan appeared to our first mother, his pretensions and professions gave him the appearance of a good angel. And by pretending that Eve should get a great increase of light, that is wisdom, wisdom and understanding. He deceived her and led her to transgress. It is generally said that Satan has three forms under which he tempts men. Number one, 
The Subtle Serpent. Look up here. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I'm going to tell you what. The wrong preacher, the wrong Bible version, the wrong direction can corrupt your mind and seduce you from simplicity. I mean very easily in a, in a, in a very subtle way. You could be seduced from what God would have you to do. I mean, whole churches can be seduced. Man, I'll tell you what. What do they use? Rock music. Some of them do. They come in with their music. Their shallow CCM music seduce a church. Pretty soon, pretty soon they're mixing fat beats, got the smoke machine, and the church, the church looks like a, the church looks like a nightclub. Totally deceived and looks like a nightclub. Then the Bible version goes. They take out the music, they take out the Bible, or they take out the Bible, they take out the music. Corrupted from simplicity. Shallow CCM music. But hey, they call themselves Christians, right? They call themselves Christians? Let's see if I can find this because it's kind of funny. And. I think I'm going to play it just uh, we'll we'll kind of break for a minute here from this and take a little break from it because then we're going to continue on. I'm not done. Believe me. But I, I thought you'd get a kick out of this. It's kind of funny. And it's it's a parody, but it's really there's a lot of truth to it. Get it over here in a second. I'm a Christian, but I'm totally not judgmental. I'm a Christian, but I'm totally not arrogant. I'm a Christian, but unlike most other Christians, I'm totally not rude. Are most other Christians rude? Shut your stupid face, Trevor! I'm a Christian, but I totally don't think I'm better than other people. Thinking that you're better than other people is like putting yourself on a pestle. And I don't do that. Like, Christians who put themselves on pestles are way down here. But I am not that kind of Christian. I'm way up here. I'm a Christian, but I'm totally not stupid. I don't unquestioningly believe something just because my pastor tells me it's true. I unquestioningly believe something because my gender studies professor tells me it's true. I'm not one of those science-hating, illiterate fundamentalists who doesn't believe in evolution. 
Actually, a lot of creationists are really well-educated, intelligent people. Uh, not according to Bill Nye, moron. And he should know, because he has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering, and he used to pretend to be a scientist on television. I'm a Christian, but I totally don't believe any of the Bible's teachings on sexual morality. I'm the kind of Christian who is firmly committed to living a way that 1 Corinthians says makes me not a Christian. Did you know that the average Christian kills almost 18 gay people every year? That's not <laughs> true. It is true. <laughs> I'm a Christian, but I'm totally a feminist. Definitely a feminist. Oh, totes a feminist over here. Absolutely. Yeah, I wouldn't really call myself a feminist. <laughs> what? Excuse me? What's the matter with you, bro? Or however you self-identify. Oh my gosh, trigger warning much, Trevor? Trevor, if you don't say you're a feminist right now, I'm gonna drive down to the morgue, cut the ovaries out of a cadaver, and super glue them to your forehead. Fine, I'm a feminist. Yeah, you'd better be, you pathetic waste of an X chromosome. Being a Christian is all about loving people. It's about being kind. It's about accepting all kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds, whether they're liberals or other liberals. Being a Christian is all about changing your beliefs to please the unbelieving world and then calling your fellow Christians haters when they refuse to stop believing the thing you totally believed five seconds ago. Isn't it about Jesus? Isn't Christianity about how Christ Jesus, true God and true man, died and rose again to save us from our sins and to win eternal life for all mankind? <laughs> Christian is all about not forcing your morals on other people. Like if you're a crazy conservative Christian, that's fine. But you should never get all judgy and ban all the kids in town from expressing their teenage angst through dancing. And that happens all the time. Yeah, I don't think it does. Yes, huh, Trevor? And I should know, because I saw it in a documentary called Footloose. <laughs> Oh, that was funny, man. Anyway, so there you go. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, they call themselves Christians, don't they? I mean, they do. And that's a parody, of course, but how much different is it than what they're like? That was eight years ago, by the way, that he did that parody. Like eight years ago. Think about that for a second. Right? So how, how similar is it? to what people call Christianity right now, today, right? So anyway, but uh, it is funny. All right, but here's the thing. As we get back into our study here uh, and, and we look at the deceitful workers, how they have the power to do what they do, Because they do. Where do they get it from? They get it from Satan. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed. So what did he say? Paul says not to marvel. Because Satan is transformed, transforms himself, right? He's able to, Lucifer is able to transform himself into the minister of righteousness, right? Into, into an angel of light. Therefore, because of that, it is no great thing.
Satan comes as the subtle serpent. He also comes as the roaring lion. The Bible talks about that. It says, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Our weapons against that is to be sober-minded and to be vigilant. Watchful, circumspect, attentive to discover and to avoid danger. Be sober. Whom resists steadfast in the faith? You fight Satan by being steadfast in the faith. That's how you resist him and that's how you war against him. But that's one of the ways he comes. But his most dangerous way is the angel of light. There is no, and by the way, the most interesting thing very interesting in my case that I preached a sermon many years ago many 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 moons ago many moons ago This one. There it is. It is here. It is called Satan, Your Enemy. This series was preached, started back in 2013. It's called Satan, your enemy. Resist the devil, a roaring lion. Be sober. Watch Satan, Satan, the anointed cherub. Satan, the anointed cherub with power and authority. Satan, the anointed cherub, his judgment and fall. Satan, the god of this world. Satan, the prince of the power of the air. Look at this one. This is the one that I was looking for. Satan, the transformed angel of light. His most dangerous form is his religious form. Nothing more dangerous. Nothing more dangerous than Satan's religious form. I'm telling you, when he comes, Lucifer, the light of the mystery religions, I preached that in 2014. This is a series called Satan, Your Enemy. Oh, my friend, this is, this is the most dangerous side. Transformed angel of light. This series is packed, jam packed full of information and explanation on Satan, on Lucifer. On the person of the devil. On the way that he works. Maybe someday I'll revamp some of this because it's definitely necessary. Um, huh, How about that one? 2015. Five ways Satan uses the saints to hurt the work of the Lord. Uh. <laughs> oh. oh, I can feel the knife. Um, I can feel the wound from the knife in the fifth rib. But anyway. You never forget it, though. That that was a thorn, not a knife. The thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Anyway, back to this. That is his most dangerous side. 
He often, and we'll talk about that a little more on Friday probably, but he often is the angel of light, persuades men to do things under the name of religion. Which are subversive of it. Subversive. Subverts many. Hence all the persecutions, faggots, fires of a certain church, the Roman Catholic Church under pretense of keeping heresy out of the church, and hence all the horrors of the infernalities of the Inquisition in the form of heathen persecution like a lion, he has ravaged the heritage of the Lord. And by means of, means of our senses and passions as the subtle serpent, he is frequently deceiving us so that often the workings of corrupt nature are mistaken for the operations of the Spirit of God. No marvel. His most dangerous side, which we will talk about. Therefore, it is no great thing if Lucifer's preachers, right, deceive many. If Lucifer's preachers, the Antichrist preachers, arise. And deceive many. And no marvel. Since Satan himself is capable of appearing to be an angel of light. It is not to be deemed strange that those who are in his service also should resemble him. For Satan himself is transformed. That is, he who is an apostate angel, who is malignant and wicked, who is the prince of evil, assumes the appearance of a holy angel. Paul assumes this as an indisputable and admitted truth without attempting to prove it and without referring to any particular instances. See, when he came in Genesis chapter 3, when he came in Genesis chapter 3, he came to Eve to give her light. Lucifer, the light of the lodge, right? He came to give the secret gnosis, the light. Doubt it not, says Albert Pike. So every major false religion today has Lucifer as its light, the light bearer. And that light bearer uses that gnosis or that light or that knowledge to deceive the hearts of many. Therefore, it is no great thing it is no great thing. I mean, sometimes you and I think in our minds, like, there's no way, like, I remember telling this same devil, this wicked man that was possessed by, who would preach on the pulpit, on the streets with me, and the rest of the church, who would preach from the pulpit of Old Paz Baptist Church. And then would stay up all night long watching pornography. I didn't know that. Until later. Until he admitted it to me. You want to talk about what confusion that wrought in my mind. I was like, what? I cannot even explain to you the amount of confusion that that brings. Yeah, like you, you can't. Yeah, you can't even imagine it. It's 
can't even imagine. But how do they do it? By the power of Satan. See, when I was a false convert, I preached a few messages before I was saved. I did, and then God revealed to me that I was lost, and then the Lord brought me to repentance and faith in Christ. I preached a few. Now, I wasn't purposely deceiving anybody. I was deceived myself in that sense. I mean, I just didn't understand. I didn't know that until God revealed it to me and showed me, wow. I'm not saved. That's why I could sin like that. It finally dawned on me. It finally, the Lord showed me. God revealed it to me. That's why I could compromise all the rules when nobody was looking sip some liquor and get drunk and then go into the junior church and preach it the next day. Go on a bus route with a stinking hangover. Why? Because I wasn't a Christian. That's why. That's why I could do it. But these people know full well what they're doing. God didn't let me get away with that very long. That was, a, that was like... Months, a couple months. Now, I didn't do that all the time. I had outbursts of those. But I was lost. God showed me that. Then he saved my soul and changed me and made me a new creature. But I had no power in anything I preached. Until I got saved by the grace of God. But... They can feign themselves. They are transformed by the power. That's why they can get on a pulpit and they can preach and sound. They sound believable. Their preaching never really does anything. It never accomplishes anything. It never moves anyone. Right? It never moves anyone. But they can do it. And they do it then when they know that they're false and they're liars and they're living in sin and wickedness. Continually, year after year after year, like living in absolute sin and dis like the most wicked and vile thing for year after year. And I'll tell you what God did to me. I was a lost man. And what God did to me. I had a pastor. My pastor that I went back to church and I wasn't saved yet. I thought I was, but I wasn't. I had my pastor drive me all the way up to Minnesota to pick up a big screen TV that I won in a contest and I cheated for that too, by the way. But I won in a contest, right? That big screen TV. Trade it for a vehicle. Right? Trade it for a vehicle. And, you know, so I had a vehicle to drive. Man, it was a nice, uh, not a, not a uh, Pontiac Firebird, I believe it was. I don't know. It was a Trans Am or a Firebird. I can't remember. Man, it... anyway, so you know what I did? I, I got all the way up here. I had the pastor drive me all the way up here. And I was still not saved. I wasn't living right. I was lost. And while I was up here, I grabbed a big old bag of dope, a big old bag of weed. And I stuck it. I hid it away. And I drove with that preacher. That preacher had a bag of dope on him, had a bag of weed and his stuff all the way down there. All the way to Minnesota, all the way back to Iowa. Man, I thought I got away with something. You know what God did? About a month later, God let that vehicle blow up. I mean, blew that, blew. Blew that head gasket on that thing. Why? 
God wasn't going to let me. I wasn't even saved yet, but God wasn't going to let me. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that so shall he also reap. God wasn't going to let me get away with that. Well, you going to do that? God brought me down, took everything away from me to save my soul. And, and to change me and gave me abundantly above all that I ask or think. But ask or think now. Amen. I didn't get away with nothing, man. But they are transformed. These people aren't, like, confused about what they are. Like, they're not confused. Therefore, it is no great thing. If his ministers, they're doing it on purpose, these people. Like, I was sinning on purpose. I mean, I knew that, but I didn't get the ramifications of what I was doing until I realized I was lost. It's like, whoa, what am I? I was newly back at church. I mean, I was just newly back at church, and I mean, I didn't know what I was. But these people, though, they do it on purpose. These people are in authority. I wasn't in any authority. I was just a guy that got saved or went back to church, and now after I'm saved, man, even the thought of foolishness and the thoughts of sin and the thoughts of things cripple me, and I I want to repent to the Lord and ask God to forgive me, and I I, I couldn't preach living wickedly. I I couldn't do that. I'm not saying I've never done anything wrong or I don't sin. I mean, I got to get it right with God. I can't live in sin and live in gross sin and perversion and things that are contrary, you know, to the word of God like that and, and live that way. Even things that are lawful but not expedient bother me. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be according to their works. Therefore, it is no great thing, right? So that's what he does. His power, he can assume such an aspect as he pleases. That's what Satan can do. Right? He can assume such an aspect as he pleases. He can dissemble and appear to be eminently pious. He is the prince of duplicity as well as of wickedness. And it is the consummation of bad power for an individual to be able to assume any character which he pleases. What does that mean here? These people, they can be around you. God-fearing people. And then they can go home at night and they can live in absolute debauchery and wickedness. They can live a fake life. And then they go home. They fake it around everybody else and they go home and they're miserable. I mean, not miserable because of what they're doing. I mean, they're just miserable wretches that are horrible to deal with. Right? And they're just wicked. They're vile and wicked people. He can assume such an aspect as he pleases. He can dissemble and appear to be eminently pious. That's how these people are. They can appear. How do they do that? No marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed 
as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. His art, he is long practiced in deceitful arts. For 6,000 years he has been practicing the art of delusion, and with him it is perfect. It is perfected. We are not to suppose that all that appear to be, be piety is piety. Some of the most plausible appearances of piety are assumed by Satan and his ministers. None ever professed a profounder regard for the authority of God than Satan did when he tempted the Savior. And if the prince of wickedness can appear to be an angel of light, we are not to be surprised if those who have the blackest hearts appear to be people of most eminent piety. Man, they appear to be so eminent. We may be always sure that if we are to be tempted, it will be by someone having a great appearance of virtue and religion. Some of them. Oh, these men, they try to seduce you. They try to trap you. Not seduce you like, like them personally, sexually or something. In that way. They might use somebody else to do that, though. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that old wicked serpent will try to trap you. And he'll use somebody under the guise of godliness. Do it. Hmm. We may always be sure that if we are to be, were to be tempted, it may be by someone having a great appearance of virtue and religion. We are not to expect that Satan will appear to man as to be as bad as he is. He never appears and neither do his ministers appear that way. Man, I'm telling you, in public and in, in, in public and around other people. By the way, that's why as a pastor, the qualifications of a bishop Watch our show. First Timothy three one. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a lot, novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into the reproach of the snare of the devil. So what does it say here? Well, ask his family. How does he live at home? Is he godly loving at home? Is he a godly loving father at home? Is he a godly loving husband at home? Right? How's how truly how is the home life? Is he the same at home as he is Everywhere else in that sense. I mean, I get the fact that when we're in our own home, we're going to, you know, relax a little more because it's our home. Right? But what I mean is, 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 is it consistent? And one thing by God's grace that I can tell you is I'm pretty much the same as a pastor. I'm the same as I am around other people as I am in my own home. Like there's no pretense. Like my children aren't like, my children aren't like um, putting on a show for people when they're around and 
we're all different when nobody's around or or their dad is different and they don't recognize it or there's confusion in the home or there's confusion in the marriage or there's confusion in the in the that's not there thank god that's by grace i'm not i'm not bragging about that i'm not i'm not taking any credit for that i'm just telling you if you're if you come to my home that's why you know i have i have people in my home with they uh, members of the church in our home and and they're around and they work with me and they, you know, they're around my wife, they're around my children, they're around people that come and visit. They come into my home and they're around our, I want them to understand that like, we're not, there isn't any pre, like there's no pretense or there's no, like, we're not actors. We're not acting anything. We're not, we're not being different than we do the same thing we always do. Right. Do you understand that? That's what I mean. They ought to be the same thing. They ought to be the same way they always are. Like, I don't hide the movies. I don't have any. <laughs> I, don't, I, just, I don't really have any. My kids have some video games that I screen that, you know, that, that we make sure that they're okay for them to watch or play with. Or, and they only get like an hour a week. And it, well, the little ones get like 20 minutes a week and the older ones get like an hour a week. In the winter time, in the summertime, I don't want them to have any. They need to go out and play and do everything else. In the winter, when it's like 35 below, we might break out the Wii and some other things and play some video games. Something not bad. But other than that, I mean, we don't, you know, th what you see is what you get. The books my children read, the things that they do, the things our home do. That's, those things are all important. Is anybody perfect? Uh, no. <laughs> But that ought to be, there ought to be consistency in the home with that. There ought to be consistency. It ought to be the same. We are not to expect that Satan will appear to a man as to be as bad as he is. He never shows himself openly to be a spirit of pure wickedness or black and abominable in his character or full of evil and hateful. He would thus defect him, defeat himself. He would thus defeat himself. It is for this reason that wicked people do not believe that there is such a being as Satan, though continually under his influence and led captivity by him at his will. Yet they neither see him nor the chains which lead them, nor are they willing to believe in the existence of the one or the other. And no marvel. Says one, this need not be wondered at, nor is it any new or strange thing, nor should it be thought to be incredible that there are such persons in being. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He's transformed into a good angel, which we'll talk about. One that has his abode in the regions of light and is possessed of divine and spiritual light and understanding, who is clothed and arrayed with light. This is his form and essence. The apostle speaks agreeable to the notion. Right, that he comes looking like he is clothed as God himself. Angels of the day and angels of the night. Satan, the enemy of mankind, sometimes appears in the form of one of these as he did to Eve in the garden and to Christ in the wilderness. See, Christ had the same temptation as Eve did, only worse. Only worse. Christ took a worse temptation. Than he came as this angel of light. To tempt him when his body was weak, when he was starving, when he had fasted for so many days and nights. Men will do crazy things when they are starving. Literally, men will do the craziest things when they are starving. They are at their weakest point when they are hungry. Their minds are weak. Their bodies are weak. Their passions are easy to give in to. Their anger can rise. Their frustration is there. It is no great thing.
and to enter Christ in the wilderness, and by such appearances he often imposes on mankind, pretends the greatest friendship when he de designs nothing but ruin. Oh, I'm telling you. I had a man that pretended to be the best friend I ever had. And his only design was to destroy everything. He said he was trained to do it. He told me. Later, at the end, it's all coming out. Last time I ever seen, well, it wasn't the last time I ever seen him. I saw him again on the street. But he told me, yeah, I was, I was trained to infiltrate churches and destroy them. Yep. Really? Wow. Well, I, after he said that, I believed him. Okay, bye. Tell me that. That's all you got to tell me. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Pretends the greatest friendship when he designs nothing but ruin and under a notion of good, either honest or pleasant or profitable, draws on into the commission of the greatest evils and under a show of truth, introduces the most notorious falsehoods. I'm telling you, I watched it. Notorious falsehoods and errors and under a pretense of religion, all sorts of idolatry, superstition and impiety. Watched him cast devils out of his wife. Even I was praying for it. And none of it was real at all. All Satan's. Oh, I think they were all possessed. That I believe. Under a pretense of religion, all sorts of idolatry, superstition, and impiety. It is in this way he has succeeded in his enterprises and temptations. These are the wiles, stratagems, and cunningly cunning devices. The false apostles are charged as deceitful workers and upon this account because they would transform themselves in the likeness of the apostles of Christ and though they were the ministers of Satan would seem to be the ministers of righteousness. They would be as industrious and as generous in promoting error as the apostles were in preaching truth. They would endeavor as much to undermine the kingdom of Christ as the apostles did to establish it. There were counterfeit prophets under the Old Testament who wore the garb and learned the language of the prophets of the Lord. So there are counterfeit apostles under the New Testament who seemed in many respects like the true apostles of Christ. And no marvel. Hypocrisy is a thing not to be much wondered at in this world, especially when we consider the great influence Satan has upon the minds of many who rules in the hearts of the children of disobedience, as he can turn himself into any shape and put on almost any form and look sometimes like an angel of light in order to promote his kingdom of darkness. So he will teach his ministers and instruments to do the same. But it follows their end is according to their works. The end will discover them to be deceitful workers and their work will end in ruin and destruction. Transforming power. Pretending power. Hypocritical, deceitful power. They pretend that they are sent by Christ. In a direct charge of hypocrisy, they knew they were deceivers, yet they assumed the high claims. One of Satan's strongest devices. The one he used took the Bible, the word of God. He took the words of God and he tried to use them to seduce Jesus. When Satan came and appeared before the sons of God in Job 2.1. Came and appeared among them, didn't he? 
a dreadful character these men have, for thought they would pass for ministers of righteousness, friends to holiness, and men zealous of good works. They are no other than the ministers of Satan doing his work, serving his interests, and propagating his kingdom, which is the kingdom of darkness. Then shall be according to their works. For either God will make public examples of them in this world, or if they are not made manifest here, though they may deceive themselves and others, they cannot deceive God. He will take off the mask, their hypocrisy shall be detected, their evil work will be laid open, and they will be judged according to them and condemned for them to everlasting punishment. Should not be a surprise. You are not to wonder if people of the basest Black as character put on the appearance of the greatest sanctity and even become eminent as professed preachers of righteousness. End shall be. It's their final destination. Their doom and eternity shall not be according to their fair professions and plausible pretenses, for they cannot deceive God, but shall be according to their real character and their works. Their work is a work of deception. They shall be judged according to that. What revelation there will be in the day of judgment when all impostors shall be unmasked and when all hypocrites and deceivers shall be seen in their true colors. How desirable is it that there should be such a day to disclose all beings in their true character forever to remove impostor and delusions from the universe? You know, Paul talked about these men more than one occasion. He warns Timothy about it in 2 Timothy 4, 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. Yeah. Of whom be thou ware also. Paul warned about him, right? Be thou where also. For he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer, no man stood with me. But all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. That by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Amen. Because I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Praise the Lord. That's the power they use, though, that transformed power of Lucifer, of Satan, of the devil. Subtleness, deceitfulness, craftiness, whereby they lie in wait. That's why the church is supposed to be there. It says here that, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Jude warns us about these men. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance of remembrance so you once knew this. Now that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. These false Christs that arise. Of 
For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. All of that end times stuff. The end times signs and wonders that you hear the charismatics talk about. Right? All of it is all of it is signs and lying wonders. Romans 13 tells us these or Revelation 13 tells us these are the days marked with deceit. Second Thessalonians tells us that they are days marked with deceits. Mark chapter uh uh, let's see, where were we? Mark, is it? Um, Mark 13 tells us. Matthew 24 tells us. Jude tells us. Paul tells us, in, again, in 2 Corinthians. Over and over again, we are told that these are days of deceit. These people are dangerous people. That's why it's important to know your Bible. We're not talking about somebody that just has a disagreement in a doctrine here or there or something like that. We're talking about something very substantial and people that come in to deceive. It's what they do. Um, what they do. All right, let's see. About about some song. Once again, I face Satan this morning, and I battled him all the day long. But in my weakness, God sent reinforcements, and at sundown, I sang victory. Well, I'll take to the sky. In a world filled with doubts and confusion, it's so hard when you don't understand. Oh, but I stand on that solid foundation and I'll hold to God's unchanging hand and the sun's coming up in the morning and every tear will be gone from our eyes and this old The skies, but this old clay, it's gonna give away to glory. And like an eagle, I'll take to the sky.
All right, amen. Well, listen, I'll give you another uh, chance if you want to say hi. Let's see, we'll play another. Let's see. If you want to say hi, or maybe you have a comment. We haven't played this song for. Let's see. Actually, I haven't. Let's see. Okay, I like this one too. Let's play this. Have you heard about the three young men in Babylon of old who would not bow and worship to the statue made of gold? They went into the furnace, but they never did perspire. Cause Jesus went a walking with them, walking through the fire. Oh, standing for the Savior, trusting in his might, stepping in the furnace hot, sticking to the right. Just keep right up and serve the Lord and never, never tire. Cause Jesus will go walking with you, walking through the fire. You're feeling kind of lonely as you're standing for the right. If Satan tries to trick you into giving up the fight, remember God is faithful and the devil is a liar. Cause Jesus will go walking with you, walking through the fire. Oh, standing for the Savior, trusting in his might, stepping in the furnace hot, sticking to the right. Just speak right up and serve the Lord and never, never tire. Cause Jesus will go walking with you, walking through the fire. Oh, standing for the Savior, trusting in his might. Stepping in the furnace hot, sticking to the right. Just speak right up and serve the Lord and never, never tire. Cause Jesus will go walking with you, walking through the fire. 
Cause Jesus will go walking with you, walking through the fire. Walking, 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 walking through the fire. Walking through the fire. All right, last one, then we're getting out of here. Once I drifted out in sin, had no hope nor joy within, and my soul was burdened down with pride. Then my Savior came along, and he showed me I was very wrong. Now I know I'm on the way. Well, I am on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Out in sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the way. From the straight and narrow way I was drifting every day Out upon the waters deep and wide But it all is over now Glory light is on my brow And my soul is on the way And in him so often I confide He's the keeper of my soul Since I gave him full control And he placed me on the winning side Well, I am on the winning side Yes, I'm on that winning side out in sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. I've enlisted in the fight. and right Oh, praise the Lord I'm on the way He side I'm on His side Amen Okay, we will see you all later uh, Friday We'll be back on Friday, Lord willing, at 2 p.m. Central Time. Pray for us. Uh, and uh, Saturday, we'll be preaching Saturday night. Zombie pub crawl. Late event. Starts at 6 p.m. So we will be out there until we don't know how long, but it'll be a late night. You pray for us because we'll be out there preaching. And you'll be seeing it live. Parental discretion is advised. It'll be on Rumble and maybe YouTube. Uh, not on Sermon Audio, Rumble and YouTube on Saturday, okay? 6 p.m. Central Time. Uh, pray for us. Uh, and anyway, okay, pray for our ministry. Uh, pray uh, for the Lord to continue to provide for us. If you'd like to give to our, number one, pray. Number two, if you'd like to give to our ministry, you can go to oldpassbaptistchurch.org right here. You can click on the donate button. Like that. That guy will yell at you. And uh, you can give through there. Or you can um, give through Apple Pay, Venmo, PayPal. Same thing. That's what I just showed you. But anyway, 
Uh, or you can go down to the bottom of our screen here on Sermon Audio, and here's our address if you'd like to mail us something. 1030 Highway South Highway 3, Northfield, Minnesota, 55057. Please make it out to Jason Cooley or Pastor Cooley. Don't make it out to Old Paz Baptist Church. The reason I say that is because we are not a corporation. We are not a 501c3. We do not have a tax identification number. We do not provide any uh, tax-exempt stuff or anything. We don't do any of those things. Okay, so when you make it out to Old Paz Baptist Church, it doesn't really exist in the eyes of the government. It's a church, yes, made up of people, but it doesn't have a legal standing. Okay? Anyway, so uh, just make it out to there, and uh, it all goes to the same place anyway. Um, believe me, the bill's got to be paid, all the fun stuff. And uh, it all goes the same place. Anyway, thank God for his provision and his care for us. And uh, anyway, all right, everybody. Um, thank you for praying. Thank you for supporting us. And we look to be back on here real soon. God bless you all. Have a good night here. And oh, if you want to be, if you want to watch preaching here in three and a half hours, um, I'll be on at 7.30, 7.45 p.m. Uh, it'll be live on Rumble and live on Sermon Audio. You can listen to the sermon, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 9, back in the book of Ephesians. All right? So anyway, you can you can find us there. All right? God bless you all. Take care.